Hello Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 here. In this video I'm going to be going over all of the things that I use to pass the Service Cloud certification. So I've created a quick blog post on all of the resources and things that I did to prepare for this certification. You can check it out here or in the description down below. Uh, there will be a link to this blog post and my website that I'm trying to build out a little bit. So to get started, the first thing around passing the Service Cloud certification is there's actually a prerequisite of the Salesforce Administrator certification. So if you're looking to dive into Service Cloud, make sure you already have the admin certification if you want to get the Service Cloud cert. Uh, next thing I have in here is for the study resources. So one, make sure to check the exam guide, read over everything in here, and you'll see down below in the blog post that I will actually have a lot of information and the same information around the exam guide in here, especially around the different sections in the exam outline that we have here. Next up is Trailhead. So there's a really good in-depth trail mix. It's 44 hours, so it is kind of long, but I went through almost all of the information that is inside of this trail mix, reviewing a lot of the different modules, and going through a lot of the different information that they had in here. Depending on your level and experience with Service Cloud, I would recommend doing everything or just focusing on uncertain pieces that you think you're lacking. Uh, definitely do some of the super badges. They really put your knowledge to the test and they're a great way to assess where you are skill-wise. Next, I have videos. I didn't put any specific ones that were helpful, but I know there were some that I did use and look up on various topics just to get additional information about whatever topic I was looking at. So in some instances, you can't recreate everything that you are seeing inside of the exam guide. For example, some of the uh, call tracking and uh, IVR types of things so you can definitely do some research on different IVR companies and CTI integrations with Salesforce so that you can see what they are like even though you can't install them and actually use them. As always look at other blogs and guides this is not a comprehensive list this is just things that I used and were very helpful for me so I have two links to Salesforce Spend's very similar guide and to Salesforce Chris um, they're very in-depth, maybe even more in-depth than, than I'm doing here because I have a lot of experience in Service Cloud, so I may not have gone through every individual item that is on the study guide and the exam outline because I knew some of the information or I knew that I could pull from my experience to understand what was going on. We all know the mock exams are out there. Focus on Force, one of the really big and prominent ones in the Salesforce community. Very good information there. Uh, I myself, you may remember from the community cloud certification, I don't really use Focus on Force. I like to leverage my experience, um, but it does have a place depending on where you are and the level you are with Service Cloud. They do really help you walk through the experience of taking the exam. And then the one that I actually use a good amount towards the end of my studying is Quizlet. So I put together a quick service cloud folder. Uh, it doesn't really have too many other Quizlets. This one was really comprehensive with 210 terms, um, but definitely run through Quizlets. I only use Quizlet to get an idea of what some of the questions will be like. And I always double and triple check their answers and use this as a jumping point to do some additional research on Salesforce. So take, for example, this question here on social media and uh, your support team. What do I do is read over this question and then look at all of the individual answers and try all of them inside of Salesforce to see if they work, enabling social profiling, installing Twitter for Facebook, and so on and so forth. Uh, just trying to weed out the answers, one, validating what they're saying is correct, and two, making sure that I'm understanding and going through the motions and not just memorizing these flashcards. The Quizlets and the mock exams are very helpful in understanding, but I cannot stress enough. It is one thing to pass the exam. It's another thing to actually know the content. I do a lot of the mock exams right at the end before I'm about to take my exam so that I know I'm stacking up information, going through all the trailhead modules, reading all of the articles and everything else so that it's just supplemental using the information from the mock exams and I'm not relying on it too much. Can't stress this point enough, review and replicate the scenarios as best as you can. 
Let's get into some key areas that people may not focus on that much when we talk about the Service Cloud exams, and that's milestones and entitlements, knowledge, and console. So milestones and entitlements, it is a feature, a very prominent feature inside of Service. Depending on your org, you may have a lot of experience with this or very little. I would definitely say brush up on SLAs, contracts, services, milestones, entitlements, and all the things that go around the kind of customer case support agreement process. It's very prevalent in the Service Cloud exam, and you'll need to understand at least the basics to get through this. Knowledge is another one that you will need to brush up on in case you're not very familiar with it. There are a lot of knowledge questions and when knowledge is useful, when it's not useful, and some different scenarios on why you're setting things up a certain way. So definitely brush up on knowledge. And the service console. This one was a little foreign to me. I don't really like the consoles myself, so I don't use it very much. The console is very powerful. It has a lot of different tools that help optimize and improve service teams and service quality, and it's a very big part of Service Cloud, so definitely brush up on it if you've never used it before. There are really great trailhead modules for all of these. I'll be updating this blog with some new links on those, so definitely check it out. And then we have how long to study for. So if you have no experience, definitely three months is like my go-to number for that. Um, do hit this hard. Make sure you're understanding the content and don't just try to study flashcards and pass the exams because it won't end up well once you go for that interview. One month if you have Salesforce experience and then two to three weeks if you have Salesforce and service experience. One thing that works really well for me is just booking the exam. I have to have some sort of date that I know that I'm working towards. I go ahead and book the exam maybe a month ahead day of or a couple days before make sure to sleep well and make sure to not stress about this whole process i know this can be very stressful for some but understand that it isn't the end of the world if you don't pass the first time you can retake 200 dollars is a lot of money but let's understand that the world's not going to end if you don't pass it the first time it's all a learning experience and be more familiar with the process the second time around all right, then at the bottom, I have the exam guide with a few helpful links, and I'll continue to update these links uh, with any additional information that I find to be really helpful. We've got some links on knowledge base that I've used, and then you can scroll down and see everything that's going on here, a lot of the info that I use. Some of them are blank. They may be really broad and hard to pull in information for it, but definitely try to read over all of these links just to get an idea of what's going on. All right, so this is for the most part all the resources that I use for studying for the Service Cloud certification. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Make sure to comment down below on any additional resources that you use and would be helpful for others. I'll go ahead and add it to this blog post. I'm Walters954, and remember, I believe in you.